Hello students! Welcome back to Maestrang Teki YouTube channel! If you haven't watched our previous lesson, check our description box below. This week's lesson is somehow continuation of our previous video. Grade 9 Science Quarter 4 Week 4 lesson is all about conservation of momentum. Here are our learning objectives. First, explain energy transformation in various activities or events. And infer that the total momentum before and after collision is equal. Be ready to learn class, so keep on watching! You have learned before that an external force is required to make an object accelerate. Similarly, if we want to change the momentum of an object, an external force is required. There will be no change in momentum if there is no external force. What do you think happens to the momentum of billiard balls when they collide with another ball? Is there a gain or loss of momentum? If your answer is no, then you are correct. The momentum of the billiard balls is conserved. If the m value and the v value or the mass and velocity remain the same, the momentum value will be constant. The momentum of an object or set of objects or system remains the same if it is left alone. Within such a system, momentum is said to be conserved. Take note class of the law of conservation of momentum. It says that, in a close and isolated system, the total momentum of the objects before and after collision are equal. We also need to take note of another law of physics that we need to consider when talking about law of conservation. It is the Newton's third law of motion. It says that, for every action, there is an equal yet opposite reaction. It implies that when two objects interact, they exert equal forces on each other. For example, in the game of billiards, when the cue ball hits the other ball and both of them are moving, still the momentum is conserved. Remember that the momentum is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. When the cue ball travels toward the other ball, it carries some of the momentum with it. The rest is transferred to the second ball. Therefore, none of the momentum was lost, only transferred. Using an equation, we can say that the total momentum P before the objects interact with one another or P initial, remember class that P stands for momentum and it is the product of mass and velocity. P initial is equal to the total momentum of all of the objects after they interact or P final. Next, let's have another example. Two children on skateboards are initially at rest. They push each other so that eventually the boy moves to the right while the girl moves in the opposite direction away from each other. If you can recall Newton's third law of motion, it tells us that the force that the girl exerts on the boy and the force that makes the girl move in the other direction are equal magnitude but opposite direction. The boy and the girl make up a system, a collection of objects that affect one another. In this scenario, no unbalanced external force acts on the boy and girl system. Thus, the total momentum of the system does not change. Remember that momentum like velocity and force is a vector quantity. The momentum gained by the girl is of equal magnitude but opposite direction to the momentum gained by the boy. In this system, no momentum is gained or lost. We say that momentum is conserved. Now, let's have a sample problem. Two ice skaters stand together. They push off and travel directly away from each other. The boy with the velocity of 1.50 meter per second. If the boy weighs 735 newton and the girl 490 newton, what is the girl's velocity after they push off? Consider the eyes to be frictionless. Now, let us solve this problem. Let's have first the given. Initially, they are at rest because they started standing together. So, let's have the given after they push off. The velocity of the boy is 1.50 meter per second. The weight of the boy is 735 newton. 
the weight of the girl is 490 newton and we are looking for the velocity of the girl after they push off before we solve for the girl's velocity let us get first the mass of the boy and girl take note class that mass and weight are different mass reflects the amount of matter an object contains while weight refers to the force gravity applies to an object to get the mass we need to use this formula weight is equal to the product of mass and acceleration due to gravity since we need to get the mass given the weight we can look at this triangle and arrange the formula we are looking for the mass given the weight and we have the acceleration due to gravity therefore our formula is mass is equal to weight divided by acceleration due to gravity let us substitute our given to our formula mass of the boy is equal to the weight which is 735 newton divided by the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 meter per second squared dividing this we have 75 kilograms as you can see for the unit divide the newtons by the rate of acceleration will give you the mass of the object the mass will be in kilograms because a single newton represents the amount of force needed to move one kilogram one meter next let us have the mass of the girl we have 490 newton divided by 9.8 meter per second squared canceling the unit the quotient will be 50 kilograms therefore these are the mass of the boy and the girl now that we already have their mass we can proceed in solving what is asked in the problem the ice where they stand on is frictionless thus no external force is present the momentum of the boy and the girl system is conserved there is no change in the momentum of the system before and after the push off so again here are the given and we have now the value of the mass of the boy and girl which is 75 kilograms and 50 kilograms remember class of that total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum initial momentum is zero because it started at rest the total final momentum will be the sum of the momentum of the boy and the girl which are equal to their mass times velocity if the total initial momentum is zero the total final momentum must also be zero therefore the two children must have equal and opposite momenta take note class that the sign indicates the direction of the motion and because they are moving in opposite direction they should have an opposite signs now let's substitute the mass of the boy and the girl and as well as the boy's final velocity for us to determine the girl's final velocity the mass of the boy is 75 kilograms do not forget our negative sign the velocity of the boy according to the problem is 1.50 meter per second next we have the mass of the girl which is 50 kilograms and we are looking for the velocity of the girl multiplying 75 and 1.50 we have negative 112.5 kilogram meter per second remember class this is the unit for momentum next to simplify this we need to use dpe or division property of equality where we divide 50 kilograms in both sides of the equation and that turns out to be negative 112.5 kilogram meter per second divided by 50 kilogram the quotient will be negative 2.25 meter per second as you can see i cancelled everything that needs to be cancelled therefore we have the final velocity of the girl and the final answer is negative 2.25 meter per second so let us check does the negative sign in the girl's final velocity represent the direction of her motion compared to the direction of the motion of the boy? Moreover, does the speed of the girl compare reasonably to the speed of the boy? The answer is yes. But why do they have a different speed? The boy has 1.50 meter per second and the girl has negative 2.25 meter per second simply because they have different masses however they do have equal momenta when you shoot an arrow at a target the recoil of the bow has the opposite and equal momentum of the arrow also when you launch a rocket 
the exhaust pushes it ahead in equal and opposite measure. More examples of conservation of momentum are all around us. Now, let us also talk about collisions. A collision is an encounter between two objects resulting in exchange of impulse and momentum. Take note class, in any collision, there must be conservation of linear momentum. But this can express itself in a variety of ways depending on the type of collision. Collisions are categorized according to whether the total kinetic energy of the system changes. Kinetic energy may be lost during collisions when, first, it is converted to heat or other forms like binding energy, sound, light, etc., and it is spent in producing deformation or damage such as when two cars collide. So, let's have first the elastic collision. Elastic collision is one in which the total kinetic energy of the system does not change, and colliding objects bounce off after collision. Simply, we can say that the objects involved remain separate after the collision occurs. This collision, total kinetic energy, and momentum are conserved. The objects will bounce off with one another with no energy lost even after the collision. The second one is inelastic collision. Inelastic collision is one in which the total kinetic energy of the system changes. It may be converted to some other form of energy. Objects that stick together after collision is said to be perfectly inelastic. They are two separate objects collide, after which they move together as one, as you can see in your screen right now. One example are asteroids. The collision is inelastic and they fuse together to form a larger body. And that's it for our lesson this week. I hope you learned something new today. Please do like and share this video. To keep you updated to our next video, click the subscribe and bell button. Comment down for a shout out. Shout out to all who really wait for my videos. And also, we have reached 10,000 subscribers. Again, thank you all so much for watching and see you on my next one. Bye class!